Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. All right, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Glad to have you guys here today. So as you guys know, we are big proponents of using other people's money to build wealth. And today's guest, you know, may not be for the brand new startup investor, or it may be. Kind of depends on where you are in your life, if you're a business owner. But if you want access to money, I think we have a guy on today that can help you get money, which is good. So let me introduce Mr. Joe uh, Camberato to you today. Joe is from National Business Capital. He's the founder of it. He's over $2 billion in loans, 25,000 transactions. That's very, very impressive. And uh, we're glad to have you here today. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's great to be on the show. Love everything that you guys do. And yeah, OPM, using other people's money, you know, all those 25,000 transactions that we did were, you know, other entrepreneurs using other people's money to scale and grow their business. We love OPM. I think people, you know, when I first started my company, I'm, I'm 50, almost 54, goodness. And I, I remember when I first started my company way back when I was 19 years old, my first company, I remember, you know, you before the iPhone. <laughs> oh, well, for anything. Yeah, my, my first computer had one megabyte of memory. I remember it had thousand dollars back then. So yeah. And that was a big deal. Yeah. I remember I remember getting the internet. I took me, it, I wanted to pull up a Mercedes to see it look, it took me about an hour and a half to pull up the picture to see a Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Look, thanks for reminding me all day, I'm Joe. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, yeah. But yes, that was before the internet. So and I remember, you know, thinking that you have to grind out and, and sales is what built the company. So for me, sales built the company. But I got to tell you, you know, if you once you get going with sales, it's better to have access to money to run a company. I mean, if you yeah. don't have access to money, that's the lifeblood of any operation. Even, even you know, we run now two multi-million dollar successful businesses, but there's time when cash is not available. Sometimes just the way cash is flowing in and out of a business Sometimes it's not there. I think you're able to help a lot of people with that. So tell people kind of what you do and, and kind of the in yeah. and out of goals. Absolutely. It, you know, it's actually a really good point, Glenn. A lot of people don't understand this. It even, even took me um, a little bit to understand this, even being in business lending um, for over 15 years now. Um, it, when, when people are actually growing and doing well and growing fast, um, they actually need more money and access to more money, which is really interesting. Cause like if you're growing and you're doing good and you're profitable, but if you're growing fast and you're reinvesting, you know, typically you wind up laying out, you know, a lot more than what's coming in. Yes. Um, maybe you're doing a big tech build. Maybe you're, you know, doing the biggest inventory purchase you ever did. Maybe you're taking on multiple jobs at once more than you ever did. And, you know, a lot of people don't really understand this, even sometimes in their own business, you know, when you, you know, you take on a job, let's say you're a contractor, we worked a lot of construction guys contracting on um, people, you know, uh, you know, doing multiple jobs at once. You know, if you've been able to handle two jobs at once and now you want to do four jobs, well, you got to buy materials, you got to lay out payroll, you have to do all these things and it stuff adds up quickly. And you could have a ton of money coming in. You look at your financials, you're doing great, but you haven't collected the money yet, you know? Right. So, and, um, so a lot of people don't get that. We, we try and educate people on that and, um, and explain that. But um, yeah, you know, so, you know, companies that are growing and scaling fast, we do really well with. I, I found the national back in 07 with one real, you know, really vision and mission was just there's all these lenders out there and let's bring all these business focused lenders into one place and make it really easy and simple for people, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners to access capital. You know, and back then, you know, a lot of lenders just, you know, joking about, you know, before the internet, before the iPhone, this was like right before the iPhone, but a lot of these lenders didn't have websites and stuff. So, you know, um, I was in the residential mortgage business. I moved over to the business and commercial funding side, and I saw all these owners that were refinancing their homes, using home equity line of credits to fuel their companies. And if the bank said no, they really had no clue where to go. And then maybe they applied another bank, another bank, and then they were exhausted. You know, you apply three different banks, all the paperwork, you know, the application's five pages long. It's, it's, it's exhausting. And I wound up, you know, a lot of these customers kept asking for business loans. I'm like, you know, I don't do that. So long story short, I took one customer and I went and shopped around and, and I went to a bank. It was a restaurant. 
um, that wanted to expand into catering. They were doing weddings on Long Island, which was very big and a lot of money. And um, I brought it to a bank and they laughed at me and they said, we'll never fund a restaurant. So I said, well, do you have a lender that would do this? And they you know, pointed me to a private lender, sent me another private lender. Ultimately, I wound up getting the deal done. And I said, wow, there's private lenders out there that will work with business owners. All they do is fund um, business owners. They don't do checking savings. They're not banks. So I just started bringing all these lenders into one place. Fast forward to today, we have over 75 lenders on our platform. You now apply digitally. Back then it was fax machine. You know, now it's digital. Now it's fast. Um, you know, securely, you know, you can certainly uh, securely upload all your documents. We can connect to your bank account, pull that, all that info in and that we review everything in one place. And then we match you to the right one or three or five of those, you know, of the 75 lenders. You also get to speak to someone here who's got, you know, really understands the lender guidelines, one of our business financing advisors. And based on what you're looking to accomplish, we do everything from SBA to lines of credit, to term loans, to equipment financing. So all depending on, you know, if you're in construction, need more equipment, that's a set of lenders. Um, if you're a, a doctor that wants a credit line to counter, you know, waiting for your insurance receivables, that's another group of lenders. Um, you know, if you're in real estate and, you know, got some stuff going on, maybe you want to leverage a line of credit, that's another set of lenders. So, you know, it's, it's really, and all these lenders are constantly changing their guidelines. So we've made it real simple. You apply in one place. We process over a thousand applications per month. We've completed over 25,000 transactions since we started. And we, because of all the volumes that we're doing, we fund millions and millions of dollars per month. We get to really see which lenders are really approving, more importantly, funding. You get an approval, getting it funded, that's like another part of the process. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. when you're doing volumes, you get like lenders right now, certain lenders are tightening up in construction. Some sure. are tightening up in the transportation industry, but this lender is opening up. So we we know how to like, you know, move the applications to the right lenders. And, um, it, you know, it takes, you know, um, some technology and then really smart yeah. people. That's and then we do that really well. It. With the Fed, you know, raising the rates, what, what they're doing right now in the world, is that affecting the ability to borrow money that you lend out or your people lend out? I mean, is it, like you said, some are shrinking. It just depends on the industry. What's what's that look like to you in your world? It, it's a, This is a really wild time. It's a very interesting time. So in some ways, in the private lending world, in the non-bank lending world, it's actually gotten more competitive and we've seen the rates come down. And what's happened is, is the rates in the banking world, prime rate right now is 7%. Yep. A lot of bank deals are prime plus 1%, 2%, 3%. So let's just say you're a prime plus 2%. You're essentially at a 9% interest rate, which is just crazy. Yep. What's happened in the private lending world is all of these people have a lot of dry powder, aka money on their balance sheets that they're you know dying to lend. A lot of these lenders didn't lend through COVID. Um, because no one knew it was going to happen. And then PPP and EIDL loans, all that stuff took over. And if you were a business owner, the deals were so good, it was free money. Why would you borrow money anywhere else? Okay. So a lot of these lenders didn't do a lot of business. Now they have a lot of extra money and they're like ready and, and willing to lend now that the economy's bounced back. Um, but you've got certain industries now. It's really weird. Like, you know, I, I found the company 07 going right into the 08, 09 recession. Crazy time. That, it was very. First house. You know that? This was our first house. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. So we started yeah, our business at like, the same time. We know. Best, <laughs> best time to start a company. You learn all the, all like the worst things. Oh, yeah. Just get that right out of the way. Like right out, out of the gate. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I learned a lot from them. In the middle of it, it really sucked. But, you know, getting through it, you know, there was a lot of learning that happened from there. But, um. You know, then lenders like paused on specific industries, restaurants, hospitality, construction, like all that just stopped overnight. Now, you know, we're seeing restaurants, some restaurants killing it, some dealing with challenges. We're seeing some construction companies, contractors crushing it, some dealing with issues because they don't know how to manage supply chain or their jobs or price jobs the right way with the fluctuation of materials. We're seeing some transportation companies scaling and can't hire enough truckers. We're seeing some that are having major issues um, and getting you know smacked around by Amazon and Walmart and stuff like that. So it's very spotty from one business to another. So the underwritings become very you know case by case, but it's still never been a better time to access capital in the history of probably business lending. 
Um, and, you know, the one thing that I've been saying to, you know, close friends and relationships, people ask me all the time, you know, what are you seeing? What's going on? You know, if, if you don't have like a financing partner or financing relationship or a go-to, um, or you don't have like extra money in your business account right now, right now is the time that you should be applying and either opening up a line of credit or putting extra money in your bank account. Because, you know, there's so much talks now about recession. There's wild cards like war in Russia. China could be next. And, you know, not looking to get political or in, into any of that, but these are real things and this is business. And while the economy could actually do well, like people are talking about recession, we could just be stagnant and then take off. We don't know. But you could have a wild card thing happen like a COVID or like a war that gets people really nervous and they do nothing and will also get banks to tighten up. So, you know, apply for money when you necessarily don't need it. You, you know, that, that's really like the best time. Dig your well, dig your well before you're thirsty. And I, right? Yeah, exactly right. Hundred percent. This topic, Joe. I think this topic is really interesting too because it really is the mindset of I either don't have the money or rather I don't have access to the money to to do something good. It's that it's that fear mindset of you know it has to be mine. And I I've seen some stuff lately. Uh, you know, even like uh, Mark Cuban. I saw a clip the other day about how his receptionist actually stole all but $2,000 out of his bank account when he was getting going. 80 grand. Um, 80, that, like, I think he had 86,000 and she yeah. stole 84,000 of it. So he was left with $2,000. <laughs> even, even like Elon Musk, you know, like he had to choose between his two companies and, and it was like all or nothing type of thing. And I mean, there's probably a million stories that are like that of people that, that made the choice to, to put the money into their, their company and, and really comes down to a few things. Like it comes down to their belief in their self and their company. You know, do I, am I, I'm all in with this. Like I believe in this You're that much. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, but, but if those people didn't have my, I guess my point to all of that is, is to say that it takes money. There's that saying it takes money to make money. Yeah. No, that you hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. There's all, not only to that, but it does take money to make money in most cases. And so having access to that money, though, is I think the thing that it's like, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're thinking, if you stay in that mindset, if it all has to be my money, or I have to save up for this or whatever, you're probably not going to get very far very fast. But if, if they contact somebody like you to help them get their business going, and they have the personality type that's going to follow through with their business and their goals and their dreams, and really just go all in with it, those guys wouldn't be household names today if they didn't do that. I'm thinking about hundred percent. Yeah. Started we we flipped like one house our first year in 07. We bought in 07 and sold in 08. Then the market disappeared on us. Right, couldn't borrow money any place, and we had to figure out what private lenders were. So we had to go. We in our own little. We we built little five million dollars worth of private lenders over the course of a few years after that. Because you know, you know, what was the what I the saying? But you know, when when something when you lose what you like, we had two houses under contract, and the, I called my buddy at the bank and said, "Hey, I get, I get one of those one of those um, uh, no income verification loans." He goes, "Yeah, they're all gone." I go, "Well, you can get one for me." He goes, "No." I can't. I go, we're best friends. He goes, I know. I can't get it for any. I can't get one for me. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah, it, it, I didn't understand like the concept that. of gone. I'm like, what do you mean gone? And so it, I'm That's like, that. so we had to punt. We had to figure out private lenders. And so but what, my point that then we got to the point where we did like three the next year and like seven or 10 the next year houses, flip the houses. That was the year we started to struggle because we didn't realize that doing more deals requires more money. Correct. And you don't realize because yeah. you're, you're, you you're were borrowing. growing and you were doing good and you were flipping houses and you were making money, but you were laying it back out on more properties than you can keep your hands on. And that and and, and, and that's and that's exactly my that was like my point from what I said earlier is when you're growing fast, you actually need more money. And and, and a lot of people you don't, don't realize, get it. You realize it though, Joe. I think a lot of people don't realize until they're halfway in it. That's some of the problem. No, they don't. hundred percent. Yeah. They, yeah. And and I think, and then it does go back, everything is mindset and, and, and especially in business, you know, 80, it's 80% mindset, 20% strategy. Like yeah. I'm, I'm such a big believer on it. Um, you know, Tony Robbins talks about that all the time it's and it, it really, all time. Yeah. Yep. it's all, all about mindset. And, you know, and I think what actually, what's so funny is it's like an, it's like kind of like an entrepreneurial curse when things are like working and going well, your fear like prevents you from doing more of what's working. You're like, oh, like 
you were at seven loans, right? Seven houses. And you're like, oh my God, I don't want to borrow more money. But you're like, it's working. I like, keep doing more of that. You know, yeah. and, they, and and not saying that you guys did that, but I've seen this yeah. happen where we've had people come, they've borrowed money, did well. And we're like, hey, do you need more money? Like, ah, you know, I don't really want to, you know, borrow another another quarter of a million dollars. I'm like, well, well, what happened last time? Well, you know, I did that, I did that. Did you make money? Yeah. I'm like, so why aren't you searching for that again? You know, and it's 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 like, well, I don't want to have any debt. I like not having debt. And I'm like, well, you, you took debt and you paid it off and you made money. Why wouldn't you rinse and repeat that? And there is this such this negative condensation, condensation with, like um, with with money is, you know, debt's evil and debt's bad and never have debt. We were all taught from our parents. Don't have debt. Don't have debt. Pay off your debts. But the reality is, you know, if you're going and buying a house that's out of your means, that's bad debt. If you're buying a car that you shouldn't be driving, that's bad debt. But if you're borrowing money to put it to work to make more money and what you're doing, it makes sense. That's really smart money and smart debt and, um, you know, and, and, and do more of that. And I think people get pulverized by the fact of just having debt, even if they've gone through the process and done it and it worked, it's like scary to do more of it. And it's interesting. I've seen, I see this so many times in what we do and um, yeah. it, it always really interests me. And, and you could grow without borrowing money and do it organically it's just a matter of, you know, how quickly do you, do you want to move and, you know, grow and scale. And yeah, I'm of the mind. You, you can do it with sales, but it takes a long time. It, it definitely does. Having money, you can move faster, get the right, you got to manage it right though. Right. You got to manage that money, right. You can't just slap in your account and go nuts with it. You got to, you got to. No, you, you, you got to have a plan. You can't just borrow money and hope for the best. Like there's got to be, you know, you, 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 know, you got to have like a plan, you know, so, so I'm not saying just because you're borrowing money, you're going to automatically crush it. Like there's got to, you got to be putting that money to work. That's a mindset thing. You know, somebody that doesn't want to, you know, even though they had a good experience with borrowing money, they don't want to do it again, repeat that process because that's a, that's a self-limiting belief they have. They're scared. They're, they're, they hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Or they only have the mindset they can get their business to a certain point. Yeah. That's it. And, and, you know, you, you, it's all about also having the processes in place and the people in place. And I, you know, I talk about this all the time in order to go fast. Sometimes you need to slow down in order to grow fast. You have to slow down. And what I mean by that is you have to slow down, make sure your processes and systems are in place to handle that next level of growth. So I, I think that's really, really important. But if you've got your processes and systems in place and people in place, and you've got the opportunity, like go after it and get it. And I really believe, and I was literally just talking about this with someone in my office, um, a referral and a customer and a deal that my team is working on. And, you know, and they're like, wow, it's like crazy. Like in this industry, you know, private equity is just acquiring all these businesses. And I'm like, well, that's in every, almost every industry right now. And what I don't think a lot of people realize is there are companies that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger in all these different industries. And, either you are growing and it's like, you know, it's a cheesy old school saying you're growing, you're dying. But I, I think right now in the world that we're living in is either, if you have a business, you have to stay, if you don't want to like, like really be all in and grow and be aggressive, then stay really small and really lean and, you know, make X amount of dollars, whatever that number is that makes you happy. Keep it really, really lean and mean, you know, um, you know, be like the local leader, and crush it in your industry, or like you can't just like half-ass grow nowadays. You have to be like all in and grow to keep up with, you know, th this competition and and um, you know people growing and these private equity-backed companies. You know, if you kind of like are half-assing it, you just you're really going to get your butt kicked. And depending on what you're doing, you know, business used to be all local. You know, like it was like. Now there's these nationwide companies. Now with the internet, you could sell things from you know your little retail shop across the world and and completely crush it. And your retail store is there. You don't even do any business, and it's just there, you know, to to be like a little warehouse, you know. So um, we, I think a lot of people don't get that. I think that I want to start talking about what people can do in real estate because we had just before we turn on the recorder here some really interesting concepts of what you can do for people. I, I really liked your, your McDonald's concept. You didn't say McDonald's. That's exactly what you were saying, right? So McDonald's is the biggest, one of the biggest landowners in the world because really what they're doing is buying land. And that's what Ray Kroc figured out how to put a business on the land and pay for the land. There's a, there's a local 
Um, convenience the, store. Uh, You're talking about Stewart's. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Local. Yeah. Convenience yeah, store. Convenience store. It's in upstate New York, and it's called Stewart's. And it was started by the I think they I think it was the Drake brothers. I could have the name wrong, but they started this company with one little ice cream stand, and then now. I think they have three or 400 locations. And someone said, wow, this is great. They're a billion dollar company. I said, do me a favor, look at their real estate. Everyone's on a populated corner, commercial piece of real estate. Their store pays for their real estate. I mean, and then some, right? Yeah. They, have, they, have, they have, I don't know how many, but probably, probably hundreds of millions in real estate that's paid for by their store. And you and I talked about it just briefly. And then I wanna get some entrepreneurs kind of thinking about how they could use your service. So number one, you mentioned some, if you had multiple rentals, maybe borrow on that. And maybe yep. we could talk about maybe SBA loans to buy businesses that have land. I want to sort of, this is going to be yeah. an interesting conversation, but I want to sort of migrate in that. Yeah, no, it's a great conversation. You know, so all the business, all the companies that we work with, the, you know, owners, entrepreneurs, you know, basically everyone is in business and um, those businesses are producing some sort of cash flow revenues. Separately, if you wanted to uh, buy, uh, you know, acquire a business, you don't have to own one. You can use SBA to do that. So I'll get into that um, secondly. So, you know, if you've got, you know, if you've got a, like we work with um, guys that have got a bunch of rental properties. So if you've got cash flow coming in from those rental properties and you're, you know, doing X amount per month in revenue, um, you know, which basically is, you know, the profit from your, um, from, you know, owning properties, you can leverage that and do like a line of credit purely against the business, not personal, doesn't show up in your personal credit. And, you know, depending on what you're doing, you know, um, you know, uh, in, in revenues will make up the size that you, you know, of the line of credit that you can get. We have people that have come to us. They've got multiple properties, income coming in and, you know, they're, uh, they, they're a little stuck. They need a little bit extra money to complete a rehab or something like that. They need a 50 K hundred K 250 K line of credit we can use um, their businesses to do that. Some, you know, some um, owners have also, you know, real estate portfolios and, 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 you know, uh, rental properties on the side, we could leverage your existing business, whatever that main business is to borrow money against. So you can go and do your next real estate deal or do more deals at once, or instead of using your personal money, just use your business to pay for it and, um, and rehab a property uh, or whatever. Um, Separately, which is really cool and probably underutilized, and most people don't get it or understand it, is there's two type of SBA products. There's an SBA 7A product, which is a 10-year working capital loan. Um, you can use it to buy an existing business, even if you don't own a business, and you only need to put down 10%. That business that you're buying needs to be profitable, and then that profit needs to be able to support the payment. Um, of the loan that you'd be taking out to buy the business. Um, there's a ratio that goes into that, um, but we can help you with that. Or you can buy a business with real estate and that's on a 25 year term and you still only have to put 10% down. So what's, what's really cool is, um, and you don't have to own a business already. So you can say, you know what? I, I, I've been wanting to own a business. I want to own a business. I'm going to search for a business, a million bucks. I got to put down a hundred thousand. I've got a hundred thousand dollars. I want to go and do this. And what's really cool is you're essentially, you're buying a business. You're only putting down 10%. You're buying the business. You're taking a loan out against that business. And that business is essentially already cash flowing and can afford the loan that you're taking out. Now, of course, you're now becoming a business owner. You still have to run and operate the business. But just like if you buy a piece of real estate, you have to operate that real estate, rent it, and, and, and deal with all that stuff. So um, what's really cool is that, a, that you're buying a business, but you're getting real estate with it. So, yeah. So what's, so what's cool is 25 year repayment term, only 10% down. There's businesses out there that are for sale with the real estate. So you can go and, and, you know, uh, I was talking with someone, they've been doing this with um, laundry mats. They've been looking for laundry mats from uh, that are in real estate. They're going in, they're buying the business and the piece of real estate, they're putting down, you know, 10%. Um, now they have a loan against everything. They own the real estate, they own the business. Um, and that business is essentially paying for, you know, the real estate. And they also have a business that's operating and also kicking off additional cash flows as well, too. That's pretty, now, so I always thought in my head that SBA was mostly like a, you just do it once for a startup loan. Is that true or is that not true? You can do it more than once. I um, 
I, I think they cap out at like five million dollars, um, right. you know, per borrower. But you can you can do it more than once. Um, you might be able to go higher if it's multiple entities. I forget what that is. My my team would know would know better. Um, but it's a, it's a decent amount, of, you know, uh, you know, of money that you can get up to, and you know, for some of these unique things out there, some of these unique businesses, you know, that have real estate along with it, like a laundromat or things like that, car washes that are, um, you know, they're they're a little bit, you know, self sufficient in a way, you, you know, where they're, yeah. where you know, car wash, you're still going to need people. You still have to run a business and operate it. But there's these cool little opportunities out there that if you wanted to own a business, but not go into something that's, you know, completely, you know, uh, you know, above, you know, above your head, there's some cool things where you can own the real estate and, you know, a cash flowing business, you know, so. so would that would that work for storage units? Absolutely. hundred percent. Great businesses. So same thing, if you, you know, that that's become a big business. There's a lot of private equity trying to buy up you know, storage units as well, too. So, you know, another thing that people never realize, too, is like, you know, you could, you know, go buy one storage unit. If you get up to, you know, you know, two or three storage units, the combination of that, you know, going to sell something like that, your multiple really goes up. Also, you could, you know, go and buy one storage facility, real estate storages, business, you know, two, three, you, know, you could, you know, buy this stuff, build it up, you know, maybe they're underperforming, you know, get it up. Um, to performance, and then you could just sell the business piece of it, you know, um, to private equity and retain the real estate and just, you know, lease back the, uh, you know, now they're now they're renting the real estate from you. So, so here, let me ask you a question. So, <clears throat> as I ask you, so what you know, we're used to in, in our world dealing with rates of ten percent, twelve percent, a couple of points. You know, we we pay ten percent to our private lenders um, with no points. We've just been doing it for a long time. So. But what kind of rates are you looking at for a business loan, that kind of stuff? And there's mostly fees for you, fees for them. What, what's it typically like? Can you generically say what it costs or? Yeah, yeah, I can. So it, it all depends on um, you, you know, the business, um, you know, the credit worthiness, all these different things. We don't get so hung up on personal credit. We're very focused on the business end, but every lender is a little bit different. So we're, we're working through 75 different lenders. So we can go extreme not good credit to excellent credit right and we have all the programs that would fit all the different profiles but you can have great credit not a good business and not get the best business loan right so um so and that's really where we come in and we help negotiate these things and, and and really pull in the best lender and the best deal um so if it's financing equipment then that piece of equipment is secured um, the loan secured by that piece of equipment or the or the lease um, so that those are typically, you know, started about 4.99%, 5% because you have a piece of collateral. When it's like an SBA deal bank backed, you're typically prime plus something. So prime rate plus, you know, one to 3%. But right now prime rates come up. So prime rate right now is we're doing the 7%. So a lot of bank deals right now, which people don't realize are like prime plus, you know, one prime plus two, they're like eight or 9% right now as we're making this video. Um, and do this podcast. Um, then you go to like receivable financing. If you're doing B2B business, you can leverage those receivables. You'll typically pay anywhere from one to 2% per month. So you're looking at 12 to 24% annually. Um, and then there's some revenue-based products. A lot of businesses don't necessarily have B2B receivables. A lot of times when you go to a bank, you're not getting approved because you don't have collateral. There's like three like major pieces, types of collateral. One is the most obvious real estate. Two is big pieces of equipment machinery, which are assets, right? And then three are high quality receivables. Those are assets. A lot of people don't realize this. And banks will use those as collateral. So if you're selling products like you're, you know, buying these, this, you know, thermos and selling it to Walmart, now you have an invoice from Walmart, you can leverage that invoice to get a line of credit. And Walmart is really now the security against that invoice. So banks will give you big money for, uh, you know, we'll, you know, you, you can get, you, you have a lot of options when you have B2B receivables, but a lot of businesses don't have B2B receivables. So it's really just revenues. They don't own real estate. Their business doesn't have equipment that's really valuable. Um, you know, restaurants, most doctor's offices, um, um, sometimes construction aren't really equipment heavy, like plumbers don't, they've got tools, not really big pieces of machinery. So, um, they've got cash flow, right? 
Um, and if they're working with consumers and or, or not really quality B2B receivables, then it's all leveraged off of cash flow. So if it's off of cash flow and there's not real collateral, now you're looking at probably like 1% a month, so about 12%. Um, to mid teens to high teens, and then an extreme situations can you know really go up from there. Um, Short term loan typically are they? Or are you said like the like for the, the um, buying a business? That's what is it? Would you say tw- twenty five years ago? Yeah. So yeah. So if if it's an SBA, the 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 five hundred four SBA, it's a twenty five year repayment term, but that has to include real estate. Yep. If it's the SBA seven A, working capital, you can use it to buy just the business, not the real estate. Um, um, or you can, you know, you can, you know, pull money out of your own business. If you have an existing business, it's a 10 year repayment term and typically prime rate plus, um, it caps out at 2.5%. Um, so prime rate plus 2.75 would be the max. Then you have equipment, um, financing, which is typically, um, out to a five year repayment term. Um, and then, you have uh, lines of credit, which are just revolving and pretty much ongoing for the most part. Um, some of them have repayment structures or periods where you have to pay them off. And then you have term loan products, which are like the non-real estate, non-asset, purely off of revenue, which are typically 12, 24, and 36 month type of repayment terms. How do you get paid? How do you guys, is there a fee for you guys? Is it percentage based? Oh, we charge a success fee um, that we get paid You know, uh, once the deal closes. Um, and um, depending on the loan size, we'll make up what that fee is. Just to get people uh, wheels turning about real estate and, and how we can tie that into what you do, Joe. So far, we've talked about um, uh, laundromats. Yeah. We've talked about storage units. We've talked about car washes. Um, I was also thinking about how people, uh, there are people that specialize in buying mobile home parks. Um, yeah. Like the- so you own real estate in the business or RV parks. And then we recently, Glenn sent me something the other day about how people are buying RVs and essentially Airbnb being them out. Um, oh, wow. That's funny. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Same thing with boats. People Airbnb their boat out. Yeah. I have a buddy who does that with boats, actually. It's funny. Yeah. I that back in the real estate. Too, I, so. it, yeah, I mean, there, listen, there's so, and we finance, like, we, we finance any business that's producing revenue. So, you know, we do, we do everything from medical and doctors to dentists, to manufacturing, to wholesale distribution, to transportation, to restaurants, IT, you know, e-commerce. I mean, we, we, we do it really all and that, and, you know, and a lot of construction contractors. You and, guys and with the whole process, the application process, I and mean, is that kind of what you guys do? We do. Yeah. So we're here as a resource. We, we really are a time-saving machine and also help save stress and stress and, uh, and, and frustration. So, you know, you, you come to us, we, um, we have a digital app. So you apply on one app that we can use to go to all of our lending partners, which is really important. Um, we tell you based on the dollar amount that you're looking for and understanding like you, your time in business, your industry, your cash flow, your revenues, your credit profile, all that stuff. We know very quickly this is going to make sense for a lender A, B, C, or D. And lender A, B, C, and D are going to need this type of documentation. We collect all that documentation from you. We tell you exactly what's needed. So there's none of this back and forth stuff. We collect the whole entire package once you give us that complete package, um, which you know, some people you know hand it over to us very quickly in, 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 in you know, same day. Um, we package that all up and then we um, you know, submit it into the different lenders' underwritings. A lot, a lot of times, our system is connected to their underwriting portals. So we aggregate all the information, and then we push it out to our lending partners, and then they spit us back an approval very quickly because we're so dialed into their systems. So we're essentially like a wholesale you know, broker, a wholesale lender in a sense. We push that information out. They spit us back an approval or a decline. Um, if it's an approval, we'll take those terms along with any other approvals that we get. We go over them with the customer. And then the the business owner from there, you know, says, hey, you know, I really like option one and option two. You know, maybe option two is 250000 And they're like, well, what does that look like at 200000 And we'll we'll go over the different payments and and um and terms. And then whichever one they pick, um, you know, uh, sometimes you know, we have to collect a few additional things you know, to uh, a few final stipulations to wrap it up. We'll tell them, hey, we need this, this, and this to close. You get that over to us. We coordinate with underwriting. 
we usually set up a final underwriting call and then we move you right through to funding. So we, we help you package it up. We, but more importantly, we explain what reality is. So before you go through this create this whole process, which, you know, you go to most banks today and they're just like, oh yeah, just fill out the application, right? And give us all of this stuff. And they have no clue. Like there's such a underwriting's in another state. They're not even allowed to talk to the underwriters. There's like no communication, right? So we know like we're like, like 90, probably 5% probable on what you're going to get approved for and, and what those terms are going to be. And then if that all makes sense, then we'll say, okay, cool. Get us this, 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 and this, and we get you right into, uh, into underwriting. Very cool. You take a lot of the headache away from that process. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Time, time and frustration, like that we're a time and frustration machine. Uh, you know, uh, we save you time. You don't have to shop around from lender to lender. We do all the shopping. It's exhausting. Um, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And, and, and filling out, you know, our, our, our applications are one pager. If there's more information that's needed after the fact and the lender asks for it, we'll get it at that point. But to get started, it's one page. Um, usually it's six months of bank statements. If you're over 250,000, we'll need um, last year, year of date financials and last year's tax return. And from there we can, you know, go get, you know, approvals up to about $5 million. Um, and, um, and, you know, we, we handle that whole process. And what's cool is like, if the lender turns you down, you won't even know it. We're already on to the next, you know, lender. There's sometimes we get five declines and then we get three approvals, right? Um, we also do a soft credit pulse. You're not getting your credit dinged constantly, um, uh, which is really important. And, um, you know, and you've only had to apply one time, give over one package. And then, you know, we have a whole, we have a process team of 10 people here, um, we're, you know, around hundred employees or so. So we're, there's all different departments and we're all doing, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of work that goes involved. We've also spent millions of dollars of building out technology. So that also helps move things through, you know, through the process and 250,000 and under, I mean, we can fund in literally hours, um, last, you know, uh, last month, and, you know, uh, someone came to us, they were like, we've got an opportunity. We need this money by the end of the day. Or otherwise, we're gonna, we're, we've lost it. Um, it was like 9 a.m. We had them funded by 3 p.m. Um, done 250K in the bank account. Now they, apply, like, they applied on the phone, digital app, um, uploaded their statements. We literally took it, pushed it out to our lending partner. They spit us back an approval. Underwriting call, done, approved, funded, money in the account. They went and bought um, all this inventory of someone going out of business at a discount and um, and 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 uh, and did really well with that. And they were super, super happy. With, with technology, the speed of getting business done has definitely uh, sped up considerably, which, yeah. is, which is awesome. It's, it's oh. unbelievable. Yeah. So this is this is all great. How do people get a hold of you if they want to apply, if they have questions? How would they, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah. So just go, um, the company and you go right to national business capital.com. That's my company. You can follow me, um, at grow by Joe. Um, check me out on YouTube, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, there's a lot of videos I put on YouTube that just talk about, you know, financing different things to think about. Um, and, um, so a lot of people find that stuff helpful and um, I've got a really great team. We've got awesome, you know, culture here. We're located in Long Island, New York. We've been the number one top workplace in Long Island the last three years in a row. Um, so when you, you know, what's important to that is when you speak to someone here, you're in really good hands. A lot of people have been here five plus years. So they get all the lenders guidelines, but we also teach people to understand business and um, industry focused, you know, um, you know, we have some people here that are really great in construction, some really great with folks in manufacturing, e-commerce, doctors. So when you kind of come into us, we'll try and match up with with someone that you know really understands you and your industry, and also your revenue sizes because those different revenue sizes mean you know different things. And we spend a lot of time in training. Um, so you know, uh, so it's it's really it's really helpful, and and we've got I think over two thousand trust power reviews now, done twenty five thousand transactions. So. Right. This, has been, this has been very interesting. I mean, you got my wheel spinning too, and uh, just it's good, good stuff. It's still, you know, you do a lot of things, but there's definitely a lot of this element that can tie to real estate if you just get clever about it. Use your, use yeah, your and uh, and tie things back in. So it's very, very clever. Yeah, but, there's a, there's, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there right now. I don't 
think people realize, I mean, if you're watching the news, it seems like we live in the worst country in the world, but there, there's a lot of opportunity. And I think people miss that opportunity a lot. What also is happening right now is, you know, baby boomers are retiring and, and a lot of them haven't really set their businesses up to sell. And a lot of them are exhausted from COVID and, and a lot of them just ready to retire. So there's a lot of deals out there. There's a lot of businesses out there. There's so much opportunity. So I, I think, you know, get focused on the opportunity, you know, don't focus on the fear, um, get a plan together and, you know, keep growing. Well, Joe, this has been great, man. I appreciate you being here and uh, I look forward to connecting again sometime. This has been awesome. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Thanks, Glenn Amber. Appreciate it, guys. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next episode of the Real Estate of Mind Show. And you know where to go find some money. And uh, always be thinking outside the box, guys. You know, we're all about leveraging other people's money and time to build your business. So make sure that you're thinking outside the box all the time. And uh, reach out to Joe and uh, see if he can get you some money. All right, Joe. Thanks again. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Guys, we'll see you on the next yeah. episode of the Real Estate of Mind Show. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review and leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer and please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.